This video is brought to you with Reg Transfers, the number one place for cherished plates. And if you're watching this video, as soon as it comes out, there is still time to enter to win a 500 pound voucher on their Instagram. Go, go, go. Hello, hello, and welcome back to TGTV. And more specifically, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a very cool video. Now, you join me at the brand new premises of the Classic Car Company. Many of you will remember the Classic Car Company because uh, I filmed many times there, uh, most notably with my 912 and also my BMW M3. However, they moved to a new location and I'm here not only to see that, but also to pick up a very exciting car and show you all and tell you all exactly why I love this car so much. So anyway, let's head in then, we're going in here. This is a step up from where they were before. Not that there's anything wrong with their previous location, but now this is the setup. They've literally just moved in here, and this is actually giving me ideas for a setup similar of my own. So there's various bits and bobs going on here. I've literally just interrupted a working day here. Hello, mate, how are you doing? Some of you will recognize this chap from uh, my video before, doing amazing work on my BMW M3. Anyway, we've got a 993 Target here. So, I'll just explain what is going on here, first and foremost, and then we're gonna get into the video. On the left side here, is some of the client's cars, they're here for storage. And also, I've just gotta show you this as well. This is the Classic Car Company's uh, van, if you like. If you can call it a van, it's literally pretty much the size of my hand. But this is their Abarth 500 van. Super, super sick. They've actually just finished this car. Uh, so if you're local to where the guys are, you'll probably have seen that batting around by now. Got the office up at the end with David in there chatting away. I've uh, got a couple of cars in here for some work. That is unbelievable. That's actually owned by the chap from Sexton's. Very nice car indeed. Manual, lovely stuff. However, we are here. I've given it away in the title already to see this car drag it out and take it for a spin. And I'm going to go into exactly why I love this fairly seemingly inconspicuous Audi estate because there is a lot more to it than it just being an Audi estate. So we're gonna go into that. I'm gonna grab it out and go for a proper hoon. There's a 328 GTS as well, which I think are absolutely lovely. And I think they're a little bit undervalued as well. I think they're very good news. Right-hand drive car, lovely, lovely car. That's actually for sale. That's literally just come up for sale at the moment. And we've got this M6 as well, which is super, super cool. It's actually got the same engine in it as the M1 supercar. I love this thing, this is really cool. And if you want me to, I can ask very nicely, I can potentially take this out at some point as well. Who knows, who knows? But let me know if these grab your fancy. Anyway, they've literally just moved in here and they're still kind of doing work and whatnot. Um, we've also got a mezzanine up there, but at some point I think I'm gonna have to do a unit similar to this. I absolutely love the idea of having all my cars lined up. And I get asked all the time, why don't I have my cars all lined up like this? The answer being, they're actually in a private storage unit at the moment with loads of other people's cars, and there is a strict no filming, no photography rule down there, which is absolutely fair enough. So um, they're not all sat next to each other either. They're all in different bays. So if you wondered why I don't have a setup like this yet, A, I haven't found the right space yet. B, it's extraordinarily expensive. I wanna make sure I get the set up right so then let's take a little look around this car which basically invented the silly estate car this car was pretty much gave birth to the absolutely bonkers estate car trend we have now got surging through pretty much every single brand so then the audi rs2 avant to give it its full title was based on the standard audi 80 however the similarities almost pretty much stopped there. This was a collaboration, believe it or not, between Audi and Porsche. They were manufactured between March 1994 and July 1995. This, believe it or not, also was Audi's first RS model. It was a limited production car with only about 180 right-hand drive examples being produced. It's currently thought there's only around 100 of those remaining in the UK and roadworthy. It is, of course, all-wheel drive with a Quattro Monica on it, and it has a 2.2-litre, five-cylinder turbocharged engine, which was actually based on an engine that Audi already had, but Porsche messed around with its engine considerably, tuned the absolute life out of it to produce what is now in this car. Peak power is 311 brake horsepower, and the only transmission option was a six-speed manual box. 
Although much of the car's underpinnings are made by Audi, the car was actually assembled at the Rosselbau plant in Zuffhausen, Germany, which became available actually after the discontinuation of the Mercedes 500e, which weirdly Porsche were making for Mercedes. There was a lot of cross-pollination back in the day, not like it is now where they're all kind of uh, separated from each other. And fact of the day, ladies and gentlemen, that Rosselbau plant in Zuffhausen was also the very same plant where the Porsche 959 was made. That is a very cool fact indeed, but you didn't know that one. 0 to 60 in this car then is just 4.8 seconds, which is bonkers even for today's standards. And the car weighs a little over 1,600 kilos. And in fact, in 1995, Autocar actually timed this car 0 to 30 faster than a McLaren F1. Again, ladies and gentlemen, there's another fact for you there that I'm guessing a lot of you didn't know either. This car is particularly cool because you see a lot of them in Nagaro Blue, but also this car, despite the fact that Porsche developed the brakes for this car, this one has the optional upgraded larger brakes. So this was actually a factory option from new to get the bigger brakes on it. A very rare option for these. And of course the wheels you'll recognize from Porsches as well. And coming around the back, that solid reflective uh, brake light and a reflector area there is very reminiscent of the Porsche 996 Carrera 4S and that long light bar they were doing across all their cars even then. Really, really, really cool. Absolutely love this. In actual fact, if you look around the car, occasionally you can see some Porsche banning. These brakes are even branded Porsche, which you just wouldn't get these days. You wouldn't get Mercedes punting out a car with Audi's brakes in it. Yes, Porsche and Audi are VAG group, but you just wouldn't get that these days. This is a really, really significant car. Anyway, I think we've done enough waffling. We've done enough of the history lesson. I think it's time to jump in the car and we'll go for a little spin. So let's fire up and get out of here. We're off then, here we go. Audi RS2, twisty country roads, and it must be said, this is probably one of the nicest RS2s that actually exists left in the wild. It's done 70 odd thousand miles, and it's been meticulously cared for by the previous keeper. It really is a credit to its previous owner. It's even got the Porsche Classic head unit in here. Really nice Porsche touch in here. So, what's it like to drive? What are my initial impressions? To be honest with you, I thought that this was going to feel like a ropey 20 odd year old Audi estate. I know that probably sounds a little bit rude, but I, I thought, you know what, this is gonna be an example of just don't meet your heroes because they never live up to what you think they're gonna be. And it's just gonna feel like a ropey old car, fun, but a little bit rubbish. I was wrong. Getting in here, this thing feels so solid. There's some cars you can get into and you can just tell they will go round the clock with no problems at all. There's anecdotal stories of these things being on 300,000 miles, still in the original gearbox. These things are known for being absolutely bomb-proof and I can feel why. There's no squeaks, there's no rattles, there's nothing. There's literally nothing. This thing could be brand new. If you put me in here, shut my eyes, it'd be incredibly dangerous, and got me to drive it, I would think I was in a brand new manual Audi A4 or, you know, the modern day equivalent. It's actually ridiculous. There's probably the only creaking and wobbling you can hear is actually from my GoPro uh, mounts, which I got off Amazon for as cheap as possible. Driving position is bob on. They've obviously thought about that. I mean, anything involving Porsche, the driving position's always amazing. Typically, Ferraris of this generation, not so much so. Porsches, Audis of this generation, they've got it sussed. They know what they're doing pedals there's quite a lot of travel in the clutch um, it's got a nice weight to it it's nice and springy um, it's not a complete pain and the angle of the clutch is very nice it doesn't enrage my sciatica so so far so good the pedals are quite far together heel and toe is not the easiest thing to do or maybe I'm just not very good at it and I need uh, really really good pedal positioning to do it um, it's probably not designed for heel and towing to be honest with you I don't think you're gonna be doing much uh, brisk track work in this anywho the steering's got a nice weight to it. It doesn't feel flimsy or like when you turn the wheel, nothing happens. It does feel very direct. It just feels all very well hooked up, very well connected and very well built. And I'm sure that is not much of a surprise to most of you out there to hear that. Brakes then being the uprated versions in this car, the optional upgrades that I mentioned earlier, they feel very, very good. I mean, bear in mind this car is literally 25 odd years old. The brakes feel absolutely bob on. There's loads of progression in them and you, there's bite if you need there to be. It really is, 
very good news story. The clutch is nice and easy as well, even at junctions. You know, now we're moving into a kind of built up area. The bite point is really easy to find. It's altogether very, very good news. The gearbox as well, I just want to say, is one of the best gearboxes I've actually used in a long, long time. Six speed manual, all the gears in the normal places. It's none of this dog leg nonsense. It's got a very precise, enjoyable shift to it. And there's also a nice spring action. The gearbox just returns to where you need it to be almost immediately. Now, pootling around town. It's a very well-mannered car. It's comfortable. It's understated. Those that know, know. But those that don't, don't worry about it. Just in an estate car, chill out. Don't look too closely. Don't look at the Porsche badging around it. Nothing to see. Just a YouTuber in an Audi estate car on a lovely little village green in Kent. I think we're in. Are we in Kent? Are we in Kent? Before we get into the twisties again then, would I buy one of these? Would I buy one, ladies and gentlemen? Is this something that will be making appearance in the TGE garage? At this point in time, I think this might be a little bit too niche, even for me, to hit my garage. And I think estate cars are going to be something that I get into down the line a little bit more. When, God forbid, Ianthe, or if she gets sick of me, someone else, breeds with me, then I think I'll look at the whole estate car thing. But I think for now, the estate car vibe, I'm dodging it. Much like I'm dodging having children, I'm dodging the estate car vibe as well. <laughs> Hopefully she doesn't watch this. Although I don't think she wants them either. Maybe she doesn't want them with me, who knows. I'm sure they'll be, oh Christ. We just tested the brakes there. I can vouch that they work very well. It does inspire confidence, this car though. It inspires a lot of confidence. Going round corners, for a car that's this comfortable and relatively heavy and relatively big, it does go around bends really, really well. And you can kind of feel that Porsche inspired suspension system in there. You can feel that they've had a little tweak, a little fiddle. Speaking of tweaking and fiddling then, they've obviously fiddled around with the turbochargers in this car. And what you've got to remember is that turbochargers are 25 odd years old. They're not like turbochargers today. Turbocharged engines were different. I mean, we're in third gear at the moment at 30 miles an hour. My foot is flat right now. Nothing, 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 nothing. Oh, here we go. And we've got something in front of us. They're not the progressive, lovely, kind of well-engineered, finely tuned turbos that kind of spool up with uh, a couple of them, like a little one beforehand to get you going and build through the revs and then build up to a crescendo. This is literally just, at a certain point of revs, wallop, in you go. It just picks up like a steam train. Right, let's, let's get the window down. Let's see if we can hear this. The sound of this car, it's much like your usual kind of five cylinder, 20 valve Audi engines. You've got a reassuring kind of deep noise to it, but there's no kind of shrieking or real chaos or drama to it. Right, second gear. It's actually the worst place to do it. We've got a tight bend here. We're at three and a half thousand revs here. We'll just come off the gas and feed it around here. those last couple of thousand revs you've got to be on your mark with the shifter otherwise you'll miss it and you'll hit the rev limiter this is hell see when you come out of a bend you've got to make sure you're in the right gear this encourages you to actually learn how to drive modern cars just make you lazy you've got torque in every rev range but in this car you need to be in the right gear the right rev range otherwise you've got nothing here we go <laughs> it just makes you smile Every gear you're in, you're just waiting for that noise, that whoosh of turbocharge to come in and the thing just to kick off and disappear. It's hell. <laughs> it's complete mayhem. It is absolute hell in here. Oh my God. It does really encourage you to A, think about what gear you're in, what speed you're doing, keep a check on the revs, listen to the engine and actually drive, actually get involved and immerse yourself in what's going on. I haven't even thought about putting the radio on. I haven't even thought about any of that jazz. I haven't thought about the aircon. I haven't thought about messing around with any of that nonsense or fiddling with suspension, damping adjustment. I'm literally just in here hanging on for dear life. <laughs> what a 
fantastic piece of kit. What a brilliantly bonkers piece of kit. And I know I keep saying it sounding like a moaning old boring ass, but we really are seeing the last of these cars. Even cars like this, yes, they're still around, but they're gonna start disappearing into collections and not even seeing the light of day. They're not being made anymore, that's for sure, but they're certainly not gonna be allowed out to play for much longer. Again, with all the emissions and regulations and poo that's going on, with a constant purge of people wanting cars like this off the road. Waving at David, he's just quite relieved to see the cars in one piece. Cars like this really are gonna stop coming out to play, and it's such, such a shame. What do I think then? Horrible topic then. What do I think, values-wise, on this car? What do I think to buying one of these? Are you gonna lose the shirt of your head? Is this gonna be something that in years to come people think, who the hell wants one of them? I think this, is a moment in time, a moment in history, a historic collaboration, and it's iconic. What's more iconic than the birth of Audi RS cars? What's more iconic than the birth of, you know, fast estate cars? This was it. An Audi and Porsche collaborating in such a public manner and putting both their badging all over a car. I don't think it's happened before and it's definitely not gonna happen again. So I think you'll be in a good place purchasing one of these. Now I don't actually know what this car is up for. I think this is just coming to stock and it's going up for sale. Hence I'm being a little bit careful with it. Um, but this car is up for sale. And I think whatever, it's just gonna be one of those cars. Whatever you pay for it today, just keep adding five, 10% every single year to the value because they really are something they're gonna be more and more sought after. And cars from the 90s like this, those people are going to come into their 30s and 40s and 50s over the next couple of decades. And they're gonna be the ones buying and wanting one of these. And that's when the money kicks in, and that's when the value kicks in. So stand by on these, and if you wanna snap one of these up, this is probably the best example on the market. And now I'm not being paid to say that. I genuinely, having now driven it, it's unbelievable it's only done 70,000 miles in its time and you could quite easily see four times that before you even needed to do anything to the gearbox they're just ridiculous it's completely standard completely unmodified um, bar the head unit here which is uh, 1500 quid Porsche upgrade it's a lovely lovely bit of kit I'm absolutely adoring this car it has wound me up into wanting to buy one I think I would probably try and go with Nagaro blue if I did ever end up with one but this silver is a nice vibe and it's really understated. In fact, one of my earliest YouTube car memories was sitting with my brother, um, watching on my dad's computer, there was an Audi RS2, I think it was Nagaro Blue, that someone somewhere in Europe had tuned up to God knows what. And I, I don't know if the video is still online, I'll try and find it, screen record it and put it over this video. But I kid you not, it looked like the thing was taking off. It was absolutely absurd. It, he put his foot down and it was just, it almost wheelied. It just went burp. And me and my brother must have watched that hundreds of times. I mean, we were a pair of morons and we still are, but that was one of my earliest YouTubing memories. I mean, that video that's still online must have millions of views by now, surely. <laughs> Mainly down to me and my brother watching it. But that's really when I kind of grasped what Audi Quattro was and I was like, wow, what on earth is this thing? It looks like my dad's Renault estate car, but it's absolutely slapping. What the hell's happening here? Um, so yeah, fond memories of this car, fond memories with my brother um, at home at my at my dad's computer, watching and laughing at one of these that was probably tuned to you know 700 brake or God knows what was going on. Good times, good times. It's funny how cars can do that sometimes. They can kind of bring you back. I didn't even, I wasn't even aware of that memory until halfway driving up the road, and I thought. Oh yeah, I remember watching one of these. Fascinating stuff, guys. I'm sure you really don't care about what I was doing at eight years old with my brother. Anywho, I think that's that. I want to say a huge thank you to David at the Classic Car Company. Of course, get in touch with him. If you've got any classic car needs, he's an oracle on all things classic cars. Um, if you're local to the area, you need storage or concierge for your cars, if you've got a collection and you just need someone to help you out with it, myself included, and I use David all the time for various bits and bobs, do get in touch with him and he will also advise you on classic car purchases as well what to buy what not to buy what to look for and all the rest of it and what i'm really excited about is he's getting modern classics in now as well it's not just the really really old stuff he's got some really cool bits in so if you want to see me batting around in that 328 gts uh do let me know or the m6 that he's got in stock that is actually quite tempting because that's 50 odd grand 
And I think that's really undervalued. But you see those doubling over the next three to five years. No issues. It's got an M1 engine in it. It's good news, I think, that car. Anyway, for now, thank you very much for watching. Do subscribe, give me a thumbs up, or don't if you hated the video. Leave a comment, blah, blah, blah. And stay tuned for the next car on Classic Giveaways because we bought it and it is coming. And they will have revealed it by now online. I don't know when this video is going out. But the next car on Classic Giveaways is a Belter. So make sure you check that out as well. Cheers for watching, guys. See you later.